All right, the next aspect of um, the whole wave particle duality is what's known as the Compton effect. This fellow by the name of Compton conducted an experiment. It's another experiment you should know along with uh, uh, Einstein's photoelectric effect. All right, it was further confirmation of the wave, uh, the particle nature of light. Um, and it is something that I've seen in multiple choice sections in particular. So you don't need to know this at the kind of depth you need to know the photoelectric effect where you should be able to solve problems. Here you really need to know what it was, what, what he did, what did he find out. Okay, so Compton was wondering, uh, do photons, if photons are particles, then when they get into collisions with other particles such as an electron, uh, do they do they exhibit the same kind of behavior? Well, you know, in, in a collision, you're going to have uh, energy exchanges, you're going to have momentum exchanges. That's what he was in investigating. So he found that if he um, collided X-rays, an interesting little side note, they came up with the name X-rays because they didn't know where they came from, hence, you know, how mysterious X X-rays, but anyhow, they collided X-rays, which are you know above ultraviolet light in the electromagnetic spectrum. So he collided X-rays, which have very short wavelengths, with electrons. And when he did that, he found a very subtle lengthening of the wavelength after the collision. So you had an incoming wave going in there with a specific wavelength, we'll call it like vacuum wavelength lambda naught, and it collides with an electron, and the electron goes off in that direction. So the electron goes that way, and the photon of, um, that represents the x-ray goes off in a different direction. So this is the um, wave which has extended its wavelength. Again, it's really rather subtle. Um, and I'm just going to use a lambda for that. So what he found out is that you have a delta lambda. The final wavelength is greater than the initial wavelength. This angle, by the way, between the um, photon after the collision and this horizontal line, he uses the equation theta, or the, sorry, the symbol theta. The recoiling angle for the electron is going to be different. And I also want to point, so, so th this is a longer wavelength, longer wavelength than that after the collision, which means in, the in, in terms of frequency, is that a higher frequency or a lower frequency? Well, if before you have a shorter wavelength, if afterwards you have a slightly longer wavelength, what he called a wavelength shift, then what's happened to the frequency of the wave? The frequency of the wave has gone down, right? Gone down. Longer wavelength, lower frequency. We're still in the x-ray area, but the, the frequency has gone down because the wavelength's gotten longer. Here's the equation that governs this. It's not on the AP equation sheet. But there's a couple of pointers that I want to uh, make as we look at it. So for your wavelength shift, delta lambda, which again is the longer wavelength less the initial wavelength, well that equals what's called the Compton wavelength. And the Compton wavelength is H, that's Planck's constant, divided by the mass of an electron. That's given on the, um, the constant sheet for the, uh, the table of information for the AP test. 9.11 times 10 to the negative 11. No, 9.11 times negative 31 kilograms. Times C, the speed of light in the vacuum. Now this is a constant, right? Those are all constants. In fact, I'm not done yet. That's going to be uh, multiplied in parentheses times 1 minus cosine of that scattering angle. This is sometimes, in fact, it's frequently referred to as Compton scattering. Compton scattering. Scattering. Compton scattering. Again, you should know what he did colliding uh, X-ray uh, photons with electrons. Why? 
to see, to see if they behave like particles, what happened. He found that the uh, longer wavelength afterwards um, showed that there was an energy and momentum exchange in the collision. That's what he found out. Uh, so here's his equation. The, the shift in the wavelength equals his, his uh, Compton wavelength times 1 minus the cosine of the scattering angle. A couple interesting things here. Uh, this is a constant. If you do all the math there, uh, you're going to get this number right here, 0 0.00243, 0 0.00243. Again, it's a constant. That's going to be in nanometers, nanometers, times 1 minus cosine of whatever the scattering angle is, okay? What this tells us is that this shift in the wavelength, it actually has nothing to do with the original wavelength. The only variable here is the scattering angle. For x-rays, the only variable is the scattering angle. Anyhow, he set out to observe this, and he did. And that is the gist of the Compton effect. I am going to assign uh, some homework out of the book. By the way, uh, in the textbook, this is on page 8. 85, and I recommend you look at that. Again, I don't, don't get into too much of the detail, the mathematics of it. This is plenty. And I also recommend you look in Mooney's, and in the Mooney's book, that one, uh, it's page 347, 348. It's fairly short. But you absolutely should be able to understand what he did. I have seen it, like I said, in um, multiple choice, in multiple choice questions. All right. So depending on what you're asked for, the only variable here again is is that one right here, the angle. You've got the two wavelengths, and this is a constant. All this is given in in the uh, textbook. All right. Further proof of the of the particle nature of light. Okay, that's that.